Welcome to the Elite Life Podcast. With your hosts, Trisha and Kylie. Here, we guide you on a journey of personal and professional transformation. Revealing the secrets to success. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, join us as we unlock the doors to the elite world of growth, grit, and grace. So, let's dive in. Welcome, 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 friends, to another episode of the Elite Life Podcast. I'm Trish, and with me today, as always, is my wonderful co-host, I'm Kylie. Hi. Kylie! <laughs> I'm so glad that you uh, pulled that energy out of the air. Like, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> 30 minutes ago, I was texting you going, are you really going to make it on time? Because I'd love to sleep 10 Let me minutes. tell you something. Um, Trisha likes to bank on my lack of punctuality. <laughs> and usually, she's like, you said we were starting at 9, and you're not here at 9. And I'm like, listen, the children. So finally, I decide I'm going to actually show up on time. And she's like, you could have been a little later if you wanted to. I am. <laughs> I raced my inner um, teenage self and went to a concert last night. That's why. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about concerts. We are here to tell you why you should say yes to the pet. And this is a topic that is near and dear to both of our hearts. As you know, Trisha has um, two puppers yeah. and I have one. Um, he thinks he's a human. I think they all think they're humans. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Oliver is a five-year-old spaz little human and Billy is is a 90 year old woman <laughs> <laughs> and my dog is just uh he's just happy to be here so um whether you're considering a dog a cat or any other type of animal we hope you enjoy this um because we're gonna break down all the benefits um and tell you where you should go to find a pet yeah absolutely so from boosting your mood to encouraging a more active lifestyle pets bring a lot of joy and benefits to your families um if you're on the fence about adding a furry friend this episode is definitely going to be for you i know when trent approached me about getting a dog it was a hard no i'm like we get kids or pets not them both but um i'm excited to do this episode because i feel like this will help people see a lot of other aspects than just like the work that comes with a yeah. Pet. Absolutely. So let's dive in. Um, let's start with the emotional benefits of having a pet. Um, I will tell you right now, there are days where I don't like my husband and I don't like my kid, but I always like my dog for the most part. And so there are times where I will just um, tell everyone to go away and Tigger and I go and we take a snooze in my bed or like I will just bury my face in his neck and just smell his fur, which to people who don't have a dog, like they don't get like the there's something in our brains that loves the way our pets smell. Yeah, it's kind of like the smell of a baby. Yeah. But if you don't have sure. pets, you're going to go, no, that's definitely not yeah, a my, thing. That's my mom. She's like, that dog is dirty and he smells bad. I'm like, he smells. <laughs> well, I think like for me, I'll come home after like an awful day and my two dogs are at the door and they're wiggling their butts and like Trent and Angelina are always like, you're never that happy to see us. And I'm like, if you want to come to the door and like wiggle your butt, like you're, like, you're, so, ex you're so excited to see me. You can't even contain it in your body. Like There's going to be a day where you come to the door and it's going to be Trent and Trent's going to be like, hi, mom. I'm so glad to see you. Hey. Can you make some tater tot casserole? Hi, mom. Hi, mom. How was your day? I missed you. And then he'll lick your knee. And then he'll be like, all right, that's a little too far. That got weird. <laughs> that got weird. But it is. Like, pets love you unconditionally. And, like, the more you're gone, the more they're so excited to see you. Yeah, because they have no concept of time. Like, three minutes is the same as three hours or three days. No, and studies have actually shown there is actual science behind it when you science. are. Science. We know I love the science. When you are petting and loving on your dog, your brain actually releases oxytocin, your feel-good um, hormone, and it lowers your level of cortisone, which is the stress hormone. And cortisol, the stress hormone, makes you fat. So oh, here we go. Getting a pet makes you lose weight and get skinny because it you reduces go. your stress and your cortisol. I saw um, it was a it was a little post on Facebook like many moons ago, but it was like. Um, it was something to the effect of um, 
it was something about like if you think you know if you think your wife loves you or like there she's making you choose between like your dog and her put them both in the trunk for about three hours and when you open it up see who's happy to see you <laughs> <laughs> well that is probably gonna land you in jail but <laughs> I mean it depends um don't do it especially not right now it's hot outside anyways um also uh can we just take a moment to talk about all the funny crap that the pets do it's um, our my content on my social media that involves something that oliver tore up is always the content that people love to watch (laughs) they're like oh oliver ruined your house again he ate a door that is so cute he tried to cook for you and put orange uh mexican food seasoning all over your floor oh sweet How sweet. Dave made a video yesterday of Ollie, or it was two days ago, and it was like, uh, I identify as bacon. I'm 60% fat and very salty. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so much fun. I think that's the one thing that I really, truly love, too, is, um, you know, we've got small kids, and... You know, a lot of people, when uh, we were telling them we were thinking of getting a dog, because Ryan, up until, you know, we moved in together, he did not live a single day of his life without a dog. And usually there were two. Um, And so after our cat Roscoe passed away, we were pet free for a while, which was really nice. And then um, I was super pregnant with Everett. And I was like, let's get a dog. Let's get a dog. And you remember this. Yes, I do. I was like, yeah, you're nuts. (laughs) You can't bring into the world a baby and a dog at the same time. (laughs) But I will say, um, number one, our careers allowed us to have the flexibility to be home, which made it less scary, right? So we... We put a um, we put a search out on Pet Finder. We were looking for a boxer, and all the purebreds were like five billion dollars. And I was like, absolutely not. That's not happening. And um, I was really wanting a dog that you know, when Ryan's gone for a week or overnight doing his hunting and fishing, like I wanted a dog to just have that extra security. Like they hear things I don't hear. And usually, if someone's gonna try and come in your house and they hear a dog, like a big dog, they're gonna at least think twice about it. Um, and so I remember I got an email. Email, and I was sitting on the couch across from Ryan and Tigger's face popped up and he was just so tiny and I said oh no Ryan and he's like what's wrong and I'm like look and I showed him my phone and he was like when can we go get him Aww. so we went and we got Tigger and 10 days later I gave birth to our son so the thing that I tell you all of that to say this It has been so amazing watching our kids grow up with this dog. It is teaching them responsibility. It's teaching them compassion and understanding. It's teaching them how to care for something that can't care for itself. It's teaching them um, so many amazing things, and they are building memories that, you know, they otherwise would not have had. Remember the time Tigger stole your underwear or whatever and <laughs> ran around the yard? You know, like, there are going to be so many amazing memories. So um, I just wanted to I wanted to throw that in there if you were on the fence about getting a – go with a dog. Yeah, I, we are dog people, so I know we're, we're kind of partial. The, I loved my cat. All the I cat loved my are cat. turning it off. But you might, you might want anything. A bird. I had a bird when I was younger. His name was Snowy. He was in a little cage. He was very – the good thing about a bird was, like, you don't have to do much to take care of it at all. Like, yeah. you're in the cage, you throw some food in there, clean it up every once in a while, it's good to go. So, like, you could always start with something small like that. Um, but pets are also great listeners. So, like, if you're somebody who is maybe single or doesn't feel like talking to your kids or husband, <laughs> pets are just great, great listeners. And it's funny because before I got a pet... I didn't understand, like, when people treated their pets like humans. I'm like, that's so weird. It's a freaking dog. And now I will sit and talk to Billy for, like, a whole conversation. Oh, yeah. Because they don't talk back. You can literally just, like, talk something out, almost like you do with a therapist or a coach. Absolutely. And you're just like, oh, now that I've said that out loud, that totally makes sense. Yeah. And I love, like... Like their facial expressions, <laughs> especially the Frenchies. They do the Frenchie head tilt, and they're they're really listening to me. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. My and for all you cat people, if you're still tuned in, like I love cats. Um, we had a cat Roscoe for a long time. I was so sad when he had to go over the rainbow bridge. Um, he's with Jesus now, I'm convinced, but like <laughs> Jesus has all the pets. He has all the pets in his hand. So um okay, so let's talk about the physical and health benefits of having a pet. Yeah, having a pet can actually make you healthier. No way. Yes. Um, especially dogs, because you're gonna you're gonna take your dog for a walk. People walk their cats. I've seen it. Yeah. I've yeah. seen it with my eyeballs. People walk their lizards, also seen that. There you go. See? So it's going to get you out. It's going to get you moving. Like you said, it tre- it teaches the kids to get out and get moving. You always hear parents like, you know, my kid's in front of the screen all the time. Okay. Grab a puppy. Have him go out and walk that dog. Yeah. I will tell you, um, picking up poop in the yard, that will stabilize your core and your back. <laughs> Well, and walking actually helps you lower blood pressure, improve cholesterol levels, and it reduces um, your risk of heart disease. Plus, when me and Dave, when we first got Billy, we would go and walk her. That was our time to spend together. Like we had- Billy didn't walk. I want to remind you that you had <laughs> Billy so in a little in a little baby carrier. We did, and she would get sick of the baby carrier, and then we would have to hold her with our arms. And like, even though we both were crossfitting at the time, when you're like walking two miles holding a dog, you're just like, oh my gosh. Or we were like, I remember like handing her off because our arms would be so tight. <laughs> because she was so tiny when we got her, she would she would fall in between the cracks of it. Like if somebody edged their lawn, she would fall in the cracks Aww. between the grass and the cement, which help is crazy me. to think about. Help now. me, help me. I know. We didn't have that problem with Tigger. He was literally this big when we got him. So <laughs> we had other problems though. But yeah, I I um. I love, um, like, when I was doing 75 hard, Tigger was in the yard with me, doing the laps, doing the things, whether it was January or June. Um, It's awesome to have that company, too, right? Like, if you're walking alone. Yeah, and actually, you know, they've done tests that pets can actually help improve your immune system. So growing up with pets has been linked to lower likelihood of children developing allergies and asthma. Science. Science! I always figured it was just because they have all of those bacteria in their mouth and then they lick your face and therefore transfer all of that to you. It's like exposure therapy for your immune system. I don't know. I'm just, is that science or did I make that up? Well, (laughs) I have heard that playing with cats and rabbits um, and small animals have um, also helped to increase physical activity and help with muscle tone and coordination for the little people. That's awesome. Yeah. You always see like uh, Kim post pictures of Sophie. She gets the, she actually gets chipmunks to come and play with her. She's basically Snow White. She is. I'm convinced. Yeah. I am convinced that she is Snow White. Okay. So just to sum it up, they get you active. They keep you healthy. They they lower all of the bad things. They increase all of the good things. I mean, at this point, I don't know why anyone is still like no pets at all. Well, and the last one I want to mention, too, is um, pain management. So I know like that's been one of the things that's kind of emerging um, in the medical world is people with chronic pain and like arthritis and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Chronic pain. And when you have a pet, it actually in, it, it releases endorphins in your body and in your brain. And that actually helps with pain management as well. So there's a lot of physical um, reasons, you know, physical positives to getting a pet and being able to enjoy spending time with them and releasing, you know, relieving that anxiety and that pain relief. And like I said, the allergies with kids, that's a lot of different good reasons to help your physical health. Absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about social benefits. So, um, the one thing I was thinking about when we were, um, when I was going over this outline is how, if you're shy or you have a lot of social anxiety, having a dog gives you common ground with other people or having a cat gives you common ground with other people. Like if you have a dog, for example, um, you know, and you go to the pet park, that gives you an opportunity. Like it's an excuse to be in a space with other humans who 
obviously have at least one thing in common with you. And so as you're there, it makes it a lot easier for you to have conversations and strike up friendships. And especially like if your dog does the work for you and your dog's like, oh, I really like this dog over here, then you can easily go over to the owner and be like, my dog likes your dog, you know, <laughs> and just start that conversation. Because the one thing I've noticed as you get older, it is it is so hard to make grown up friends. It is so difficult. And um. I could not imagine being an introvert <laughs> in this grown-up world where we feel like we're um, super self-conscious and we just don't know what the other adults are thinking because, like, when you're a kid, you just walk up to another kid and be like, you want to be best friends forever? Yep, never met a day in your life. Day one, you're best friends. You're on the playground. That doesn't always happen for adults. So that's another reason why um, you might want to get a dog. It's going to help you break those social barriers. Yeah, for sure. I rem- That just reminded me of a couple years ago I was at roller hockey and all of us moms were breaking out our photos of our dogs like there you go we are now in a in an era where our kids are 19 20 21 and so we're showing pictures of our pets now I love it I love it so much um we talked about that Mm -mm -mm. routine and structure super important um, when you have a pet, um, a lot of, I mean, some of the pets are really low maintenance, but either which way you still have to feed your pet every day. Even if you have a goldfish, you have to clean out their cage or their cage. If you have a goldfish in a cage, we've got some other problems. <laughs> um, you have to clean their tank. You know, you have to take care of them. So it gives you a sense of purpose outside of yourself, just making sure that this, this, this creature is taken care of, but it also provides you with structure and routine, which can be particularly helpful for like people who live alone especially if you're living alone and you're working from home you're super isolated and so sometimes that can be really defeating yeah and I think the last like benefit we're gonna talk about um is they talk a lot about cognitive and developmental benefits and you kind of touched on this with like the kids having responsibilities and empathy but they actually talk about how you know you're teaching your dogs tricks right so you're engaging in training activities problem solving skills so it's like yes you're teaching your your pets but you're also teaching your kids and yourself um different problem solving capabilities and they also say that it helps with um focus and attention because you got to be paying attention to your pet so this can be particularly beneficial for children with adhd or other attention related challenges because it's a lot um more fun, we'll say, to be focused on a pet than maybe sitting at a table trying to focus on your your math homework, right? Yeah. So you can start small with helping them to integrate with this pet and then be able to take that on to bigger challenges and bigger focuses and things of that nature. Yeah. Like we did a math problem one day. <laughs> it was like, oh, well, there were 25 treats in the bag. <laughs> and if there are four left, how many did you feed to the dog? Oh, yeah. Yesterday, Ollie ate um, three baking covered donuts. There's no math to that. It was just three and then zero. <laughs> so let's address some concerns and challenges. Because okay. that's, of course, what gets us all and inhibits us from getting our pets. So the time commitment. Obviously, you have to look at your life because the last thing you want to do, which I think we saw during COVID, everybody was home, everybody was adopting pets, and then we all went back to the real world, and now the shelters are full. Mm. You need to just not look at the season of life you're in right now, but maybe look ahead a little bit and see, you know, try and project what you're life's going to look like in the next couple of years. That way you can choose a pet that's going to fit not for just right now, but also for down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And then cost. Cost is definitely a factor you want to think about, um, especially because different, like if you get (laughs) a dog. Ask Trisha what she pays to feed her bloody dogs every month. Yeah, certain breeds of dogs are going to need and or want very expensive food. Our dogs, um, I I need a sponsorship from a farmer's dog because the 300 and some dollars I pay farmer's dog because my bougie dogs will only eat actually human food that they have mushed into a bag that they also put their name on um 
they won't like Billy actually will starve herself before she'll eat some kibble. So see, I love Tigger because he's easy. Um, we got him from a rescue, so he is just like a Heinz fifty seven. He looks like a Frankenstein dog because he's got like a boxer's rear end. He's got a Great Dane chest. He's got pit face, right? So, um, and he will eat literally whatever. I'm talking kibble. Food leftovers, dirty diapers. Like, he is super yeah. easy. You could literally feed him crap and he would be happy. <laughs> Oliver, too, obviously. <laughs> he did eat the bag the donuts were in as well. So, um, but veterinary care, too. And I do want to mention this because I didn't know about it before I had a dog. Um, you can get insurance on your pets. That Absolutely. way, if, if they have to go to the vet, like you have a rambunctious one like us and Oliver, um, Oliver has been to. Oliver's been to the vet more times in his uh, one year we've had him than Billy's four years combined that we've had her. Because, again, circling back, he eats things. Yeah, he eating. eats whole boxes of cookies and, and all of these things, and he knows how to parkour and jump off of countertops, which then hurts his legs. So um, you can get pet insurance. So we have pet insurance on both Oliver and Billy. It's only like 40 bucks a month on um, Billy and like 60 on Ollie because he's – not a mix um so he is wild yeah he's wild um so know that there is that insurance and then you know if you're gonna do grooming if you take them somewhere to get groomed that's gonna be more expensive we groom at home dave actually gets in the bath like we have a big giant bathtub and he puts on his swimming trunks and gets in the bathroom and it bathes the dogs so you can do grooming at home hashtag emotional support animal i'm just saying they are they are he loves those doggos yeah and think about your living situation too for example if you are um in a condo the hoa might not allow you to have a cat or a dog um you want to definitely think about do you have a fenced yard um you know do you have a space for a litter box you want to make sure that they have space you want to make sure that you have space and that it's not going to be a situation where like I said before oh I have this awesome pet and now I have to give it up like right now I am working so hard with Beth shout out to Beth Hudspeth because we have two amazing amazing clients and um they are looking for a rental and they have four cats they have four they have four cats I'm like I would rather try and place a pit bull than four freaking cats but you know what that's the amazing part about working with the elite realty team like we go the mile we go the extra mile so um especially if you are renting you don't want to just like I said think about where you're at right now your landlord might love your pet right now but if you need to move um you should just call us and we'll talk about buying you a house so you don't have to worry about it ever again (laughs) shameless plug (laughs) no Eric I remember Erica Medina actually had a client and that was her why she wanted to she had a bunch of cats and she wanted to get more cats so she literally bought her house so that she could get more cats dude i'm i'm like not for hoarding animals but like if you are a person where you have the space and the time to give them the life that they deserve like power to you like empty that shelter like ryan we talk about this all the time um the the memes you see on Facebook where it's like if I won the lottery I'm not telling anyone but there will be signs <laughs> and it's all the dogs Ryan's like if we win the lottery I'm buying all that land up north and we are going to empty every bloody shelter on our way up Aww. all the dogs will have the best life ever I mean that brings us to where do you get them you mentioned exactly. the shelter exactly so we uh, like I said we found Tigger on Pet Finder so Pet Finder is a great website where all different like the shelters the rescues can all post their puppies their cats their birds like everything whatever you're looking for you can find on um pet finder or there's a bunch of other websites um check your local shelter these animals um you know and i know like you guys went to a breeder like if you want a purebred like that's great i don't have that experience but what i'm saying is these animals have sometimes had it really, really rough of no fault of their own. And they just need someone to come and love them. And this is one thing I wanted to throw out. As you are thinking of getting a pet, go volunteer at the shelter. Go volunteer at the shelters. Get a feel for like the different kinds of animals that are there, what their care looks like, um, what it feels like. Because they do need volunteers to take these animals out and play with them and be with them and show them love. 
so that they're not just sitting in a cage like a prisoner and um, getting an institutionalized mentality, you know. <laughs> so um, it's good for everybody. So go to your local shelter. Um, Oakland County has an amazing shelter off of Telegraph. Um, your local county, your local city has shelters. But there's also a bunch of rescues. So when we got um, Tigger, he was from Poet Rescue. And that's where our amazing Jill hangs out. And she helps foster all these amazing puppies and stuff. Um, we have three agents that foster puppies. Stephanie Mashney fosters puppies. Jill fosters puppies. And then Jill's friend Pam fosters puppies. That's awesome. Elite Realty loves the loves their puppies. I'm telling you. <laughs> like we, it is, so, and, and these, these, like the shelters are filling up, right? And so they need people who will come alongside and, um, you know, take them into their home and give them a good life and teach them how to be around humans so they have a better chance of being adopted, right? Yeah. Because they have to learn these skills of being in a house and minding their manners and, you know, dealing with other dogs or pets or dealing with children. Um, and that gives them a greater chance of being adopted. So those are really, really great places to start exploring your options for finding a pet. Yeah, we found both Billy and Ollie online. Um, and I was just like Googling around randomly. And they both were actually. Random Googles. Yeah, they both were actually like the last um, dogs in their litters. And so poor both of them actually like Oliver was um because Billy was the only girl so all the boys got sold and she was the last one to get sold and her name was Mary which is so weird to think that Billy was Mary and then Ollie he was like in a kennel with like a giant dog and like just eating out of the giant dog's food and like not being taken care of like a puppy so he had a lot of like digestive problems and stuff so sometimes even if you're quote unquote getting them from a breeder those people aren't actually breeders they just happen to have a litter of puppies and they don't know how to care for them and do things like Billy Billy had quote unquote papers which was just a piece of paper that was written on it three dogs were born one was a girl named Billy and that's what my sister brought me back when she picked her up because she picked up Billy from St. Joseph and I was like where's her papers that they said and so she hands it to me I'm like I mean, this is a piece of paper, but these are dog papers. Like, KC papers. No. So <clears throat> online is a great place to start is what I'm getting at. And um, even if it's not quote unquote a rescue, sometimes you are rescuing those puppies. Absolutely. And the one thing I want to throw in before we wrap up is beware of scams. Oh, yeah. So like I said, um, and I'm sure you ran into this when you were looking for your dogs, too. Oh, yeah. Um, When we were looking for boxers, um, I started on Facebook, um, started talking to people, <laughs> looking at the pages, looking at the groups, trying to figure out, you know, where we could get a boxer puppy without like having to give up our arm and our leg and our firstborn child. And and so there were plenty of people that were like, oh, we're in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, OK, we'll drive for a puppy. You know what I'm saying? Like to Ohio. Yeah. Um, and they're like, no, no, no. We'll bring it to your doorstep. Send us six hundred dollars, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no, we won't be doing that. So if you are planning on, um, you know, meeting someone online or whatever, do not send them any money okay. until you see that dog. So the moral of the story is don't get scammed um, because people will ask you for money ahead of time. Make sure that you see the dog, you check the dog out, and then give them your money or fill out an application. Yeah, we work. met um, the woman who gave us uh, Billy. Shout out to Brooke. She was amazing. She's on my Facebook. Um, and we met her at Chase Bank. I was like, I bank at Chase Bank. I see there's one in your city. Why don't we meet you there? I will give you cash. You give us the dog. Actually, my sister went there. So, um, but that's what we did. We met right at the bank because there's also like cameras at the bank and stuff too. And we were traveling like three hours away to meet a stranger and give them $2,000. Yeah, I mean, that'll do it for you. So to wrap up, yeah, go get a pet. Go get a pet. They bring you so much joy and companionship and even health benefits. I told you about all the health benefits. Absolutely. Do it to get skinny and live a healthy life because they're more than just animals. Like you said, they they become a really big part of your family. I never realized how much I would love our freaking dog. Tigger is my first dog. And I look at Ryan all the time. I'm like, I love this stupid dog. I love yeah. his big, dumb face and his beautiful brown eyes. I'm like, did you know I would love the dog so much? He's like, well, of course it's a dog how do you not love a dog 
<laughs> well, thank you for joining us today on this special 4th of July. Happy 4th of Fourth. July. America. America. That's right. Episode of the Elite Life Podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> I was waiting for you to be like, don't forget to subscribe and they know the rules. A friend. Thank you for joining us today on the Elite Life Podcast with Trish and Kylie. Don't forget to share this episode with a friend so we can keep delivering you more fantastic insights on grit, grace, and growth. Stay connected with us on Instagram and Facebook, where we'll keep the ideas flowing to help you build a life you love and leave a legacy you can be proud of. Until next time.